Hello and welcome to the Macmillan Living Well video for Shrewsbury and Telford Hospitals NHS Trust. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it is able to provide you with some useful tips and ideas for you to use in everyday life. Hello, my name's Leah Morgan and I'm the Macmillan Living With and Beyond Cancer Project Manager based at the Royal Shrewsbury Hospital. There is an estimated 2.5 million people living with cancer in the UK currently, and this is set to rise to 4 million by 2030. In the last five years, the number of people surviving for five years or more since diagnosis has risen by 260,000 or 21%, and this is set to rise in the future. This is why we have taken steps to support those living with and beyond cancer through our programme, of which this video is a part. We hope that by the end of this video, you're able to live well and stay well, received information about nutrition, fatigue, physical activity and emotional well-being. The topics have been covered by different areas, so please be aware that there may be services within your local community. Within Shropshire, Telford and Recon, we have a free physical activity programme which patients who have been diagnosed with cancer can self-refer or be referred via health professional called the Get Active Feel Good Service, funded by the Lingen Davis Charity. It is a tailored physical activity programme which offers support and advice to help you meet your goal. The details for this programme are available on the useful contact numbers at the end of this video. The video is divided into chapters, so maybe you could dip into the topic that is most relevant to you, or maybe look at a chapter each day or week. By the end of this video, we hope that you're able to feel confident about how you can help yourself to live as well as you can. At the end of the video, we've created a list of useful numbers within the Shropshire, Telford and Recon area. There is also a link on the website which will direct you to complete a survey. Please can I ask that you take the time to complete this so that we're able to make further improvements to our service. Living well is different for everybody. It is about exploring aspects of the person holistically. This concept looks at the person physically, emotionally, mentally and spiritually. By identifying your needs and finding ways to be able to manage these, we hope that you're able to engage with life that is best for you. There are a number of living well activities and sessions throughout Shropshire, Telford and Recon for people affected by cancer. Within your area, there will be a local information service available for you to find out more information on the topics covered in this video, as well as services that are available in your local community. For our area here in Shropshire, Telford and Recon, there is the Macmillan Information and Support Centre based at both hospital sites, Shrewsbury and Telford. The Haymar Centre, based at the Royal Shrewsbury Hospital, on 01743 261 000, extension 1957. The Information and Support Centre at the Princess Royal Hospital in Telford, 01952 565 702. However, there may be reasons that you're unable to attend those Living Well sessions and activities available for you, and this is why we've created this Living Well video. The topics that have been covered in this video have been taken from the common concerns that have been highlighted from the Holistic Needs Assessment and Care Plan National Results. A Holistic Needs Assessment and Care Plan is a simple questionnaire that you can complete to identify your concerns. From there, a health care professional will create a care plan that may give you advice, information or signpost you to local services that are available for you. Before we move on to the first chapter, I'd like to introduce you to a few people who are living with and beyond cancer to speak about what living well means to them. Living well for me is about being able to go to my local wood with my camera and I enjoy taking photographs of natural history and even sometimes share them with the Shropshire Photographers Group. As a consequence of my treatment, I'm left with life-changing problems. This has meant that I've had to adjust my daily living and to be able to enjoy certain activities. Although this has been hard... Going outdoors and finding a new passion has improved my quality of life so much more. I enjoy foraging at the local wood 
and looking for what is available for me to take home. I also collect dead branches, which I then turn into pieces of woodwork, and I've made a number of pieces. Due to the health problems I have, I've had to make adjustments so that I'm able to craft the woodwork pieces. This is why I've had to adapt the tools I work with to ensure that I can carry on doing something I love. I will always find a way and I'll never give up. My determination is another reason why I enjoy learning survival and bush skills in the outdoors. And this is what living well means to me. I love being outside learning new things, but it also gives me time to think and take in the beautiful surroundings. I can walk at my own pace and recharge my batteries through doing some gentle physical activity. Physical activity is a huge part of my life and keeps me living well. For me, doing physical activity is for my mental health as much as my physical health. Having a positive attitude and being physically well helps me combat what has gone on before and after my cancer. Living well to me means doing as much of what used to be normal as possible. Um, before my breast cancer diagnosis, normal meant exercising almost every day, swimming, gym workouts, walking, that kind of thing. Um, I religiously did my physiotherapy after my operation because I'd been warned that if I didn't, my shoulder could freeze and I would have to have another operation. So as soon as my surgeon gave me the go ahead, I get, got back in the gym and started gentle walking on the treadmill. Once I started my chemotherapy, I was worried about my exercise, I, but still determined to stay as fit as possible. I'd read the long list of side effects, and whilst preparing for the worst, I was hoping for the best. During my first two cycles of chemotherapy, I didn't exercise in the first week because I felt very sick. But I did go out uh, walking in the second and third weeks, avoiding the gym uh, because of the risk of, of infection. The first time I went out walking, I was very slow and got very tired indeed, but I made it. My lowest point was in the first week of my second cycle when I was feeling sick all the time. One day I didn't get dressed and I just sat watching television feeling very sorry for myself. The turning point came when I read the book The Complete Guide to Breast Cancer by two uh, doctors, one an academic GP and one a breast surgeon, both of whom have been breast cancer patients. One piece of advice they gave was that no matter how ill you're feeling, you should try and do at least some exercise every day, even if it's just a few yards down your drive. And from cycle three onwards, I exercised every day. Exercise has had a very positive effect on both my physical and emotional well-being throughout my cancer treatment. From that point on, cycle three, my symptoms were less severe and generally I had a much more positive outlook towards uh, my treatment. It also meant that when I came to the end of my treatment, having exercised all the way through chemo and radiotherapy, I had less of a hill to climb to get my fitness back. I'm convinced that physical exercise has been the key to my positive approach to both my cancer and treatment and has helped me cope much better with my symptoms. Well, when I first um, met my oncologist, I was told about um, a drop-in session for breast cancer patients 
And initially I thought, I'm not going to need that. I'm going to be absolutely fine. But when I got to my third cycle, I realized that I really would benefit from talking to other patients. It's one thing um, for the health professionals who are incredibly knowledgeable and have seen hundreds, if not thousands of patients, um, to tell you about the symptoms you're likely to experience and what you could do. But when you're actually talking to other patients who've been through exactly what you've been through, it's incredibly beneficial to, to get their advice on little things. Uh, for example, if you get problems with your mouth, you can eat little bits of cold melon that's been in the fridge. That sort of thing just really helps you to get through and to cope. My name's Colin and I once had cancer. Easy to say and getting the treatment was easy, but what happened next was a little harder and was necessary to get me back on my feet again. I knew I'd never be as fit as I used to be, but I had to make the most of it. I wanted to live well again. After my initial surgery in 2014, followed by six months of chemotherapy, I was not in a very fit state. Further surgery over the next three years didn't help. I knew that I would need to have some exercise and because of my bowel surgery needed to look seriously at my diet. I've always been a fan of walking and swimming so this was a good place to start. I've been involved with a special needs swimming club since we moved to Telford in 1997 so plan to go back as a swimmer not as a helper. I also wanted to get walking again. I've been mountaineering since I was 8 years old including several years on a mountain rescue team. I knew I would never manage Everest, but anything smaller than that would be a real bonus. I started walking as soon as I felt able. At first I only managed a few hundred yards, but every time I went out I got further and further. I didn't feel as though I was pushing myself, but within six months I was able to walk over a mile comfortably. I started getting adventurous and I went with my daughter to an Alaskan Malamute uh, rescue centre to walk with the dogs. There were only two dogs there at the time, and both have now been rehomed. Ziggy went to a family in Oxford, and Meet Thor, the other one. He's been a big part of my recovery, so I just had to give him a home. Now we walk every day, and he's a really good companion to me. I started looking at my diet as soon as I got home from hospital. At first I had an ileostomy, so, I had a, good, so a good balanced diet was really important. In 2016, I was converted to a colostomy, so I had to think again about what I could eat. In the hospital, I was having a low residue diet, which allowed my body to heal from the surgery. Each time I got home, I realized that things had to change. It was a slow process working out what was good and what was bad for me. I eventually worked out the ingredients that I could use and started putting together recipes around these. I also started baking, which was another form of exercise without realizing it. I'm not a fan of cakes, but I know plenty of people who would take them off my hands. It's now over five years since I was first diagnosed. I'm now in a much happier place. I will never be back to full fitness, but at the moment I'm living well. I'm back at school as a volunteer. I'm a parish councillor and also part of my local patient group at the surgery. Life is good for me. It can be good for you too if you look after yourself. When you're going through cancer treatment, living well simply means living, getting through each hurdle and moving on to the next. The well part is harder to focus on, as you're too busy making sure you're living through the new life you have been given. So only as you get past your treatment that you can actually slow down and enjoy the life you have fought for. Living well is enjoying every moment. This can be hard to do when you're having a bad day, but even a bad day is better than a non-day. I've learned to appreciate things that I never even considered. Having the energy to play with my niece and nephew is one of the things I missed a lot whilst I was going through undergoing treatment. So to get back to that is brilliant. The next one. Living well is taking the time to spend with people you love and care about and who have helped you through everything. 
sitting down with a coffee and cake with my sister or my friends and laughing at non-existent problems is extremely therapeutic. I am extremely lucky to have an amazing family who are always there for me and spending time with them was the best medicine I ever needed. I find that now, more than ever, I appreciate and love myself. I think I'm incredible. My body has protected me and healed itself. You have to respect it for that. And I feel I won't take it for granted anymore and will do my best to look after it as it did me. I try to make more enjoyment out of life than I did before. It's amazing what cancer can do to your whole perspective. I'm more relaxed now because things that used to upset me or stress me out seem rather insignificant in comparison to everything else. I don't want to waste energy on small issues. My life has gone off the path that I had planned, but that's fine because I enjoy a good walk and a bit of a detour doesn't hurt. When I was first diagnosed, I focused on the stuff that cancer would prevent. In reality, it hasn't prevented anything. It might have delayed some stuff and limited others, but I can still have and do everything I wanted before my diagnosis. In order to live well and move on with my life, I had to come to terms with the fact that like it or not, cancer has changed me. I'm maybe not as carefree as I used to be, and some aspects of my life, such as having a family, won't be as easy as expected. But on a whole, I'm a more positive person and stronger because of it. I remind myself how lucky I am to have life and the people that I have in it. My plan is to continue living well in the future and marry the love of my life and build a family together. I've written a poem about living well, which I'd like to read to you. Living well means smiling, the world is on your side. It means standing tall and proud, nothing to hide. Living well is cuddling with your favorite person ever. It's going out no matter what the weather. It's curling up with your favourite book, experimenting with a different look. Living well is taking time to do what you want to do. It's showing thanks to those who love you. It's appreciating the little things in life, taking a walk with your husband or wife. Don't let the bad memories bring you down. Try a big laugh instead of a frown. Living well and being happy, learning to love the new me.